again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week, we're going to look at the bass line from Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Now, you may be thinking, that's way too simple a bass line. Why are you breaking that down on here? But wait right there. We're going to look at three different ways that you can play this line depending on the bass and the gear that you have. And I'm also going to use it as a springboard for some extra study of music theory that you might not expect in the shape of the harmonic minor scale. So stay tuned for that little golden nugget. As always, the tab and drum tracks are all there over at TalkingBass.net. Just click that link in the info below. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Then remember to check out the totally free membership over at Talking Bass. Talking Bass is now a complete social network for bass players. Just log in and you'll be able to connect with over 100,000 other bass players from all over the world in the forums, groups, and chat rooms. It's very much like Facebook, but for bass players, but with the addition of over 450 free bass lessons, a ton of free practice practice resources and a set of ebook downloads such as the scale reference manual. Then if you want to take things further, there are the premium courses on everything from beginner bass to reading music to scales, chord tones, slap bass, ear training and much much more. So sign up today, remember it's totally free and join a great bass community. Okay, so this riff has a very synthy octave bass sound and it also goes down to a low D. So there are three main ways that we can approach it. One is to play it on a regular four string, but with the strings detuned a whole step. Second, we can play it on a five string. And third, we can play it on any old bass, but using an octave pedal. Okay, first let's try it on the four string. So here I've tuned all the strings down a whole step. So that's D, G, C, and F. The tune is in G minor, but it's gonna look like we're playing in A minor because of the tuning. So first of all, here's the riff itself. Okay, so let's have a look at the notes in there. So first of all, we have this. Okay, which is G, B flat, and a G. So remember, because we're tuned down, that's gonna be fifth fret E string and third fret on the A string. So, so we've got two hits on the G, then up to that B flat and back. Next, we've got three offbeat eighth notes on that G. So again, it's the fifth fret of the E string, and that's gonna be starting on the and of four. So we've got four and one and two and, okay? Four and one and two and, and then, then B flat, G, and then down to the F. So that's third fret uh, A string, fifth fret on the E string, and third fret on the E string again. So all of that uh, first two bars, Next, we repeat that, so for the first four bars we have. Then we move up onto the A string and pretty much repeat that riff. So we're gonna have this. Okay, so you can hear there's a little bit of a change there. So again, now we're gonna be on the C. So this is at the fifth fret. So it's just all the same frets there. So we've got C and the E flat, so. And instead of moving down to the B flat at the third fret of the uh, A string, instead of that, we move up to the G at the uh, seventh fret of the D string. So. And then we move up to the D, which is going to be at the seventh fret of the A string. And then same rhythm again, but we've got this little major third up on the top, so this is gonna be the um, F sharp, so this is at the sixth fret of the D string. And then we just drop down onto that open low D, so, and play the three offbeat eighth notes, okay? So, whole thing very slow. and that's the whole thing. Now, from a technical standpoint, there's not that much to say. In the fretting hand, you have the choice of either playing with the pinky or the ring finger for that fifth fret on the E string. Now, most of the time, I would probably opt for the uh, for the pinky there, just because it's a much cleaner 
technique and you know you've not got fingers flapping around all over the place so you can play it like that I mean you can play it with the third finger it's not going to make any difference uh, as long as you can get the get the notes you know then when I move up to the C up there on the A string I might play with the um, pinky for some of them but most of the time I am going to be hitting with the uh, ring finger fretting with the ring finger so that I can catch this uh, this seventh fret on the D string a lot easier with the pinky so you're going to be stretching up well, not stretching, but you're going to be making a position shift there, so... It makes it a lot easier for moving. You don't want to be on the pinky and then moving the pinky, okay? So... Then... We're just using the second finger and first finger there, so that's the middle and index for the fretting. Another thing to be aware of is the choking on those offbeat eighth notes. So we've got... Okay, so on those notes, we're choking them off, we're playing the note, and then we're releasing pressure with the fourth finger. Don't bring the hand right off, you know, you obviously want to keep it you know, touching the string, but not pressing down, so... And also bring down the finger-picking finger onto the string, just lightly, to choke off, and that gives you a nice clean choke, so... Just try getting used to that, um, maybe on just offbeat eighth notes. So if we, uh, if we were to count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So we've basically got a stabbing motion with this, uh, this hand for the, uh, for the note and this finger's coming down as we choke. And that'll give you a, a more clean technique on the choking. Okay, so that's the riff. Like I say, it's not too difficult, although some of you beginners out there might find that it sounds a little bit messy when you first start because of that choking and those offbeat eighth notes. So you want to try it really slowly at first. Really focusing on that technique and all that choking. So start out slow, build up speed, then you can try with the track over at the website. So now let's try the five string. So here we have a low B string and everything's in standard tuning. B, E, A, D, G. So let's have a listen to the riff. So if you've already learned this on the fourth string, all we have to do is take that same riff and drop it down a whole step back into normal tuning. That means that instead of the fifth fret, we're going to be starting on the third fret. So slowly we have. So we've got the G and the B flat, so that's third fret E string and the uh, uh, first fret on the A string. and then down to the F at the first fret of the E string. So all very straightforward. Twice. Up to the uh, C at the third fret of the E string. Make that shift up to the G at the uh, fifth fret of the D string. And then we're up to the D there, fifth fret of the A string. Up to the F sharp, the little major third there back to the D at the 5th fret of the A string and then we jump down to the low D at the 3rd fret of the B string and that's it, okay? So it's all written out there so you can work through it. So... Again, from a technical standpoint, there's not that much to say. It's all pretty much the same as we had with the four string, although obviously with the five string, we've got more strings to deal with. So here I am definitely gonna be using the pinky for that third fret, so. So that first finger there is muting off all of the uh, the higher strings up there. Uh, also, I'm using the thumb here anchored on the B string at the start. And then shifting up onto the E string to hold that down 
when I move up onto the A string. Um, so, you know, it's all just taking care of all the residual noise there. Also, when you shift up to this D up here, you know, I'm using the, those two fingers there, but then you've got to jump down and take that low D there at the third fret of the B string with the first finger. So you just have to get used to that shift. It's also worth mentioning that, and you might have noticed this, that I'm pretty much using one finger in the picking hand for the, for the majority of it. So as I play, shifting up onto that B flat, I'm then just raking back down to come back down to the uh, E string. So pretty much all of this can be played with one finger. And obviously when you use one finger, you do get a consistency of tone in there as opposed to uh, playing with alternate fingers. So yes, you need to work on your alternate picking, but actually playing with one finger does have its advantages. Okay, let's have one more listen to that riff with the five string and the backing track. Okay, next we can try the third and final way of playing with an octave pedal, which is going to sound like this. Now, in case you don't know anything about them, octave pedals create a pitch an octave lower than the one that we play. So we generally play up in the higher register to get that stereotypical octave effect. Most of the common pedals provide a volume for both the dry original signal and the lower synthesized octave. And that means we can go for this kind of sound with both pitches intact. So you can hear the upper octave in there and the lower synthesized octave together. Or we can drop the volume on that original pitch to take it completely out of the mix, and that's how players get that real dubby synth vibe. Here I'm using an MXR bass octave deluxe pedal, and I'm gonna be rolling that dry signal back about halfway to give this kind of sound. So now if we take the line that we learned on the five string and we shift the whole pattern up an octave to the G at the 10th fret of the A string, we get the following. Okay, so we're playing at the 10th fret of the A string and we're playing that eighth fret of the D string for the B flat. And here, instead of using the pinky, I'm, you know, I'm using the, uh, the ring finger and the index finger for fretting everything. There's that F, the eighth fret of the A string, then up to the C. Catching that high G up there at the 12th fret of the G string, and then, then we've got the D major part there. So that's 12th fret of the D string and the 11th fret of the G string. Down to the low D there at the 10th fret of the E string. Okay, so. So I think this is the best way to play this riff and it gives the closest approximation to the original sound. Just bear in mind that when you use octave pedals, you're likely going to have to deal with tracking issues at some point. And this is when the pedal can't work out exactly what pitch is being played, usually because of some extra harmonic content. That forces the pedal to switch between two different octave iterations of the same note and it fails to track and you get this kind of glitching in and out thing. Different pedals have different levels of this glitching, so you really do have to learn how to play for the pedal. But one thing that I would advise is avoiding as much fret buzz as you can, um, and you know, upper harmonic content. So maybe try flat wound strings like I'm using here, roll off some of the top end with the tone control, and play closer to the neck to provide a more defined fundamental. So now let's finally have another listen to the riff with the octave pedal and the track. OK, 
Okay, so that's the riff. Now, what's this music theory stuff that I mentioned at the start of the video? Well, it's the use of the harmonic minor scale. This tune is a good, simple example of how we use harmonic minor scales in general music writing. Contrary to what you might think, harmonic minor scales aren't just a classical technique, and when we use them, it's not like we're thinking, oh, here I'm going to use a harmonic minor scale. As you'll see, it's just a consequence of us doing a certain thing that we see in this riff. So, as a very quick primer, when we're in a major key, like C major, we use the major scale as our general palette of notes. There's a bunch of notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and the appropriate chords built on those scale degrees. So if we number the notes in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the chords on those degrees are one, major, two, minor, three, minor, four, major, five, major, six minor and seven diminished. It's a specific sequence of chords that we have in every major key. So in C major, it would be C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor and B diminished. That's the chords in the key of C major. Now, when we write in a minor key, we generally use the natural minor scale as our palette. In case you don't know a natural minor scale, C natural minor would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat. So like a major scale, but we flatten the third, sixth, and seventh to get that sad minor sound. Just like the major key, we have a set of chords on each degree of that minor scale. Chord one is minor, two is diminished, 3 is major, 4 is minor, 5 is minor, 6 is major, and 7 is major. The important thing to see here is that the chords 1, 4, and 5 are minor. And I mentioned chords 1, 4, and 5 because that's the progression for bad guy. So just think, in a major key, chords 1, 4, and 5 are major, and in a minor key, chords 1, 4, and 5 are minor. So in bad guy, we're in the key of G minor, and the root notes for those chords are G, C, and D. There's the G there's the C and there's the D. G, C and D. So that's one, four and five. But let's have a look at what's actually being played here. We've got the G minor. There's that minor third, G minor. C minor. There's the minor third, so it's C minor. But then when we get to D, we've got a major third in there. So that chord is D major. Remember what I said? The chords in the minor key should be G minor, C minor and D minor but we don't, we have D major. So, that's a little odd, but it does sound right. And that's because this is a very common move in minor keys. We often switch that chord five from minor to major, which gives us more of a pullback to the tonic chord one. So it's the same um, chord progression as then you get in the major key. So it's called a perfect or authentic cadence. Also, if you look at that third in that D major chord, it's an F sharp. Okay, so now think back to uh, the scale that we used in there, the natural minor scale, G. G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G. That's the G natural minor scale. It's normally an F, but with this D major, we've switched that to an F sharp. So what happens to the scale? We've got that major seventh in it. That is a harmonic minor scale. So the nugget of theory to take away from this is that the harmonic minor scale is often simply a consequence of switching our chord five from minor to major in a minor key. It's a consequence of a change in the harmony, hence the name the harmonic minor scale. We're not whipping out, you know, a bunch of neoclassical shred guitar lines a la Ingve Malmsteen. It's not even a conscious decision to use a harmonic minor scale at all. It's just as a result of wanting that sound of the major chord five. And by the way, if you want another basic example of this harmonic minor use, just check out the riff from Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes, which I've also covered on this channel. Okay, so that's Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Remember the lesson material and tracks are all there over at Talking Bass. Just click the link in the info below. Also, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and sign up to the Talking Bass Network and membership to gain access to a massive community of like-minded bass players and a ton of bass practice resources and downloads. Okay, I'll see you next week.